will start audible right um, so how about this title is it attracting is it able to appeal more people in this room than my competitor <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so I, I thought about it like because four parallel track if there is 100 people 25 people each if they split it's not sufficient so I put some topics which can actually attract more bees into this honeycomb. So I don't know, but maybe it's not successful. But um, I'll not talk something completely different from this uh, discussion. Whatever you have heard since yesterday, uh, it will be related. It will be related. And um, maybe a little bit heavyweight for some of them uh, uh, because it's psychology. Uh, so how this idea came in my mind? Like this title came in my mind two years back. I wrote a blog in LinkedIn and then it got uh, likes, it got likes. And if you get likes, you get more energy. Yeah, some people are liking it. So that's why actually it's inspiring me to get deeper into this subject. But of course, this subject is very fascinating for me. It means it's very quite interesting subject. If I fail as agile coach, I have an alternative profession to for survival. <laughs> so I am preparing for this for sure because uh, you do never know when this agile coaching profession will go out. Uh, my friend Amit uh, is actually uh, moving into a different thing like design thinking and all these things he is putting into his portfolio so that he can survive for long run. But if I am a plain vanilla agile coach who is just talking about scrum and then uh, implementation of this scrum, Kanban, blah, 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 it's not going to sell for long, especially when you are aged like me. You will not sell much because I am uh, 20 years experience in the industry and uh, the food I eat, uh, organization is not ready to give. You know, like 10 years baby eat less food than me. So they can do the same thing than what specialty you are bringing here. So I am trying to find something which can be more sellable, which is uh, at least I can ask for more. You need to ask for more, right? As you are growing into the career, um, number 50%, right? That figure you said, like year on year, if I can ask 20, 30%, salary hike from my company. So for that, I need to sustain something with some solid thing, right? So I thought, why don't as agile coach put this in the profile? Is it OK? Yes, yes. Means um, if we, yeah, if we, if we add as a psychology thing, uh, it will sell. <laughs> year on year, yeah. and 20 years experience I am, and then in another 10 years, imagine. So, uh, since yesterday, if you have attended um, uh, JP session, how many of you, have, yesterday, how many of you are here, yes, yes, attended yesterday? Good, uh, JP session, okay, JP, J, uh, yeah, he, 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 he talks something which I will be talking, same thing, uh, panel discussion, okay, and uh, Pratham. Okay, so uh, everybody is aware like what type of challenges we are talking about in terms of agile transformation. And uh, uh, most of these topics which I have just mentioned, it, it's all related to people. So my talk is also something related to the people aspect, like how do I sustain the agile transformation by focusing on the people aspect. And people aspect is very complex. And uh, as I told, I wrote this uh, two years back as a blog, but in my experience, like maybe five, five six years back, so when I was struggling to transform or actually interacting with the people who are uh, different in nature, abnormal, different in nature, like a tough product owner, uh, tough bosses, uh, a tough uh, people who are from USA or, or some other continent. So how do I influence them? How do I transform them? So that was the questions uh, which were coming in my mind. So then I started doing a lot of research in these areas like, okay, how do I influence those people? How do I inspire these people? Is there any easy way where I can scale myself up through which I can actually as a coach able to convince those masses? Because you know Agile is all about like, how do you interact with the people? How do you influence your people? All about that. So with the plain vanilla scrum, agile manifesto, and uh, some other practices, it is not sustaining. Like it is going up to a certain extent, but after that, when you look back into the ground level, it comes back to the original shape. So how do I do something as a coach, miracle through which I can actually able to connect with the masses and then do some changes which sustain? Will it work? I don't know, I'm experimenting. Because whatever is working for me, I'm just sharing. It will not work for you, maybe. And it is also written, one of the psychological statement, it is written that you will not agree with me for sure. Because you have a very thick filter process in your mind. 
Everybody has a very thick filter process, which is difficult to change. Until unless you yourself experiment and experience with that, you will not change. You will not change. Uh, whatever I am talking is, you will just uh, uh, time pass for you, until unless you practically experience those concepts. And then uh, you yourself feel it, you yourself realize it, then only you will appreciate, yeah, maybe it works for me, maybe I start transforming myself, then I can ask for more to the organization, 50%, 60%. Without uh, bringing this type of additional feature in your personality or in your uh, profile, you're not going to get that hike which I'm talking for. Uh, play, you, you throw one throne uh, in the outside of the street, you will get one agile coach. <coughs> Abundance. Where are those project managers going? Uh, for last two years, I have at least recruited for my uh, company. I have interviewed um, more than 500 plus uh, uh, agile coaches. Okay, of course, we are not taking everybody, but when I look into the market, I see there is the abundance of these coaches. Uh, because all project managers, there is no job for them, so why, where they will go? They become an agile coach. Okay, so how many good agile coaches we have? Yeah, we have a coaches, but how many good agile coaches we have whom we can send for a mission? So sending for us to the South Africa or sending for somewhere where they go and then transform people permanently. So it needs different types of niche capability where you need to start changing it. It will take a journey. Okay, so let me get inside. So uh, most of my career, I have worked on a product-based company. So I am uh, uh, good with product-based company, uh, allergetic with service company. <coughs> I'm sorry about that because I cannot survive in service company because of some characteristics. But with the product company, I have left, like uh, the first product you see, it's, it's a GE medical system where if you fortunately go into ICU, you can able to see that product, it will be in your bed. <laughs> You can see that product, and it's the uh, purely embedded software uh, written in C++. And the next product uh, in the aircraft, you see that this is a Honeywell product. Uh, it's a cockpit dis uh, display system for a pilot. Mm. Uh, around four and a half year, I worked there. And then the bottom product, it's a form industrial automation, like it's a power automation product, which helps uh, any uh, control system to uh, figure it out, okay, how much power I should flow from this country or from this state to other states. So all are like um, around 17, 18 years, I worked for this product. So that's all about me, like how do I get into those people? Because building such a product, it's all about like, uh, how can I get along with the people? And that is the key selling proposition which I am saying. So when I go for a, a Agile coach interview, uh, it is not like, okay, I know Scrum or I know Agile. I, I don't sell that, I sell, okay, how can I help you to transform your population? And uh, sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not successful because the people are so different. I uh, say I appear in one company from say London based or I appear in one company for a US base. It's completely different. The culture, the people, their mindset, the belief, everything is completely different. So the sales speech I should give for a London based company versus the US based company it is completely different. So for that I need to do a good amount of study about the context of the culture where they are implementing agile and how I agile coach bring value for those organizations. Uh, are you agree with me or I am talking something which is uh, no, no use for you? G ground level, yeah. Huh? <laughs> okay. so, so actually what I am saying, it's what I have experienced. And I may not able to bring same experience to you as I told you. It's a discl disclaimer in the, in the uh, it, it, will, it may work, it may not work for you. But what I have experienced while doing the Agile transformation, it's completely different context specific. Application A or team A is completely different to the application B because the business context and the customer they are serving is completely different. What works in Amazon will not work for society generally what we are working for. It's completely different. Even within society generally, if there are 10 teams, all, teams, all 10 teams are different. You, you, huh, huh? I have a team member from Andhra, from Punjab, from uh, Tamil Nadu, and another team member, completely Andhra people. Do you see, is there will be any difference? Same society generally, same application, but the combination of the peoples are different. Will it make any difference? Yeah. <laughs> So I, as an agile coach, try to understand this soft aspect of the team combination, which is called, and I'll touch upon about this, social psychology, social psychology, like how a team combination influence the deliverable. Do, do I read it? Do I see that? It's up to agile coach. Or I see some, okay, they are all scrum, I have to deploy scrum, I need to see their disciplines are there or not, blah, 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 they are not doing, I'll complain, or I do some more training, blah, blah. Can I go deeper into those team composition and then see, is there anything which I can, understand why those transformation is not successful. Are, are you with me? Yes. So I'm just pulse checking like if I am 
uh, lost in the translation or I'm still aligning with the track, right? Okay, so what do you see? What comes in your mind? Coach, and, 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 and they have produced Ah, exactly. They have produced a product which have created some something in, in the world, right? How they have produced? Are they best as a sports person in their time? No. In a way, anyway, but but the, the bigger thing from whom they are recognized now because ability to produce that next generation of players, how? So the, the, the question mark is how? And it is not obvious. Like if you read about the autobiography of Sachin Tendulkar, you may get some gleams, but you will not get actual all those things, whatever they have done for those players, it's beyond. It's how do you interact with those people day in, day out. So yesterday I, I told, right, like these people, Pratham, are abnormal people. Can you produce similar type of people in IIT? Same product I will give, same uh, IQ test, blah, blah, blah. Can you produce similar type? Hopefully none of is here, right? None of them are here, right? <laughs> Fortunately, you had a one person. <clears throat> you cannot produce similar types of people. They are abnormal. If I am a coach, okay, I will create a similar types of pratham kind of people. What type of exercise I should do? Should we tell them agility? They came here to ask about like a design and five days print, blah, blah, blah. But the passion, whatever they bring, it's, it's something with environmental, right? Something with the ambient, something with the upbringing. Can I alter some of their thought process and bring them to a state where they perform at that level of agility? Is it? It has, ex it's the experimental stuff, right? Uh, someone talked yesterday, Asunil. Sunil talked about emergent, right? Sunil talked about because we are living in a complex adaptive system where things are evolving, things are emerging. And when things are emerging, nobody can predict. And human mind is a complex. Human mind is something which is, today, today you are a diff one person, you go home and come tomorrow, you are a different person. At home, something has happened. With your spouse, you are a different person, right? Good or bad. So every day you are a different person. So I am a coach meeting with you as a team member today, talking something else. Tomorrow, I, you are a different person. Because every day my thought process is changing, undergoing different type of environmental impact at home, good or bad, and I become a different person. So that's why it's very important to understand all those people aspect. Is it theory? So far theory, are you with me? Ah, so. It, yeah, so if you work as an agile coach on a daily basis, you will come across this type of problem. Especially, you are working with the XCO, you will have a more problem. So, so I asked Sunil, okay, I have been enlightened Atma now, okay, what do I do? All those XCOs have already attended this type of training session, blah, blah, blah. But still they are behaving different way because the ecosystem is such that it is forcing them to go back to the original stage because all captive unit they ask for money how much headcount saving what is the productivity improvement blah 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 it's all cost driven you are talking about value driven agile is value driven right you see and especially in india context like where offshoring happened because of cost right we are the low cost destination center of course we provide value we do more but still the major driving force is, is cost so you see the Agile is all about value and we are talking about cost. So that's why the contrast comes. How did they become a good coach? They speak uh, the similar animal language. If you are a trainer of say elephant, fortunately, how can you become a better trainer of elephant? Okay, you can train one elephant. Okay, you are the expert in elephant trainer. Can I take you to a circus where you train hundreds of the elephants? Means how do you build this expertise to train animal? What do you think it could be? Read, read, reading a lot of agile books? Uh, yeah, so how do you connect with each animal? Each animals are different or they are all similar? Human beings are better animal? Huh? <laughs> So just just to give it just for a thought, okay? It does, this this slide does not actually tell much, but to give you a thought, like okay, what it is? If these trainer are good at training those animals, what technology or methodology they are using? Uh, yeah. So whatever I will be telling, whatever I will be telling, uh, it's a, a glass of water for you. It's it's just just a glass of glass of water, but ocean is somewhere else. I'm not. I'm just showing you the road to the ocean. 
the psychology or human human behavior is an ocean and uh, i'm just giving you a glass of water that's it it's up to you to do research and get into that ocean so how, how long do you think it will take yeah exactly it's a journey which you have started you continue to do in journey you become a better person that's it you become a better person if you become a better person you will be a better coach because coach is at the end of the day how do you transform people it's not necessarily agile coach you become a life coach you become a uh, asaram babu or or or, or yeah. <laughs> so, so because the, these people are specialized in understanding about the people their strength and their weakness and they sometimes help sometimes take advantage of the weakness but they are the experts of the people do you not agree with me they have polished those capabilities or skills and they are master in this area now as a agile coach are you not willing to master those areas because at the end of the day when you go for a boardroom when you go for a mass seminars what do you do you influence the people you inspire the people you understand the people needs and based on that you work with right i am i saying something wrong so every two seconds you are getting this question because I need to understand like if we are on same page, otherwise we go different. So if you look at this version one survey, which yesterday JP also showed this, most of this, if you it's just a surface level, like culture is a problem, infrastructure is a problem, structure is a problem. But at the ground level, if you go deeper, it is the underlying people, the way they are connected, the way they are working, all these things there. So if, if you have to address those bottom level issues, it's about like how as a agile coach I am connected with the people and how do I am able to understand what is their needs, what is what they want and how as a agile coach I can connect with their basic needs and help them to grow. Because yesterday that Pratham was, was very good case studies brought, like if you can inspire them, yesterday someone talked, talk, uh, JP talked about intrinsic motivation, right? Intrinsic motivation, like nobody has to tell me what I am supposed to do. On my own, I should do. So how can I get into that level where each team members, I can inspire them so that they can do on their own? Are you with me? How can I, as an agile coach, inspire my team members where I can motivate intrinsic part, not a reward recognition versus, but the internal motivation? How can I create that? Do you think is it possible? Yes, it's possible because if you start reskilling yourself like the way you interact with the people the way you influence the people the team whom you are working with understand their needs and how do you inspire them to do a better job do a better output it is possible but what expertise you need what expertise you need Uh, psychology is, is, is that uh, tip of the iceberg but at the bottom of it is the people understanding their behavior understanding their belief understanding their expression so what do you do you need to spend time with the people. If you don't spend time with the people, you will not be able to discover what they need. Are you with me? Yeah. So, so it's very essential for us as Agile Coach to understand the human nature, understand like what are the different subjects available for us to at least study and aware about those terminology so that I can at least apply practically. If you don't apply, you are anywhere not connected. You will be doing the similar type of Agile sessions, Scrum sessions, but effectiveness will not come. Your boss will say, okay, TTM has improved, okay, productivity has improved. Yeah, okay, this is momentary because the continuous CI, CD tools will enable these people to increase the velocity and you will be able to see that short term gain uh, and your contract will continue to renew, okay, three months, okay, six months, like this way, it will continue. But how long? Because as I told, masses are entering into the agile coach role. Masses. Millions of project managers are coming into and they are your content that they are sending like this, okay, you know, Agile Coach opening in a big company, hundreds of people in a pipeline. What difference you are bringing? They will ask you, you know, what proposal you have? How, do I, how, are you, how are you bringing the differentiation effect in this entire system? People are wearing a guardian-like certification. Guardian-like certification. Where are you? Means, I'm saying... <laughs> So basically what problem we are solving is actually able to understand like how do we sustain the agile transformation and how do you how do we actually connect with the people better way if you able to connect with the people better way, what benefit you will get Uh, is it audible, right? Okay, good. Means voice is going there and reaction is happening. And then at the end of the day, the chemical reaction has to happen here, then <coughs> voice will come out. 
So if you start practicing this thing, whatever we will be telling jargons, you become a better person. So you you able to rel relate others effectively. Your relationship will improve. And your relationship will improve means you will be able to connect with the team members better. That is your communication skill will improve. So is it your communication skill? No, the team members communication skill. <coughs> if these team members can able to ask right question to the product owner, product quality will improve. So asking right question is also a skill and it takes time to really develop those capabilities. So how, how do we do that? It's, 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 a, it's a long journey, right? The moment you communicate with your team member better, I mean, it's not me, okay, the team member are able to communicate with them effectively, the conflicts, the motivation and those uh, relationship, whatever you are talking about will improve. But it is a little bit theoretical in nature. That means at ground level, if I have to apply these concepts, it's, it's, it's a different, different activities or exercise. But are you agree with me that whatever we are talking about like why agile coach if you read about the psychological aspect of human you will become a better you will you will equip yourself better way to connect with the team and at least try to change those thing whatever is required for a transformation process and effectiveness will improve so this again psychological statement it talks about like first we need to bridge those gap like what i want to do and where this organization or company is heading like because you see this uh, today you are seeing that digital transformation is coming right so digital transformation means short term faster product development so in short term how can i develop something which customer wants or customer ask for it right so it's a long journey so i'll go a little bit quick here um, uh, time is a big constraint there is no end i was participating in one of the abb trade show yeah, this is a trade show what do you do in trade show? You demonstrate your product feature, you demonstrate your product capabilities, and someone is ask, someone is actually writing it down. What customer is asking? Is this feature available in the product or not? So that connectivity. So in a shortest timeline, how can you connect with the masses or the customers and then build the product for them? What type of skill set you are exercising? Is it the product capability or something else? Um, to do marketing, what do you need? Ha. So, see, this empathy map, whatever he talks about, if you do not understand what your end user needs, uh, and, and that itself is a, some transformation is required in your side, right? Ability to see what other people are not able to express. All customers cannot express. It's something their hidden desire. So, how do you extract hidden desire? What do you do to do that? Right? So, when they talk, when they talk, it, 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 in your college time, in your best time, when you are sitting together like this, so in a different personality, you never know when the time goes, right? Have you experienced in your college time? In your good time? Right? <laughs> so, so what do you do actually? You try to extract as many impressions as possible, right? And what you understand opponents, okay, uh, what is their motivation, what inspire them, what is their aspiration, what they want to be. So what is all this? It is, what is all? It means all of us are in the same page and we are able to understand my team members better so that I can help them better, right? That activities you did at college time, right? Fortunately, if you got opportunity. Right? If, 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 you, if you just look back, you did that actually. Hours together you have sit. And what did you did? What, what, what you have done? Discovering others. Opening the unknown things. Right? And it is proven, right? it works. We are bundle of emotion. That's what I said. The moment I come to office, uh, the moment I, I am a different person yesterday, but I am a completely different person today. So we are bundle of emotions. So you are producing software codes. If you get a call from your spouse, the code quality will impact. <laughs> do, you agree, do you agree with that? Sometimes it happens, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. By the way, I've seen that something good also, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your manager takes you to a room and you become a red face, it will impact, right? I don't know what is happening inside the room, right? But it affects your code. Because we are driven by emotions, positive, negative, whatever, we are driven by emotions. So our, com our competency, all this thing, whatever you say, it's a significant portion driven by our emotions. So if I can able to influence my emotion, I'll be able to connect with the end user better way. And this type of awesome product is a result of lot of this type of connection. So I am reiterating that's a pratham incident, like the way they have been collaborating, the way they have been uh, working together, it's all chemistry. That project manager, fortunately, she is not here. What a kick, what competency she has exercised whole time? That chemistry. She is she is helping those team members in their study, but she is ensuring that that conflicts come down, the motivation stays there, it goes up. She is doing that exercise. Now, what PM, which PMP certification will give that subject? Uh, 
Of course, in PMP, there is a subject called HR human resource. If you've read deeper, all the motivational theory are there. If you go much, much more deeper, it actually builds those capabilities, like how can I inspire people, how can I motivate people so that they contribute for the betterment. At the end of the day, as an agile coach, you have to do all these things. So it's all about mind, reading the mind, understanding people, and then understand their belief system. And can I do anything about their belief system? Can I do something through which I can actually inspire those team members whom I am coaching? So that is all about psychology. So I, we, we do not have to be a psychologist to do that, but at least if you start reading about it, you become a uh, better coach. Uh, my childhood um, cartoon was what he tells. Uh, I am the master of the universe. I have a power. So that power is psychology. <laughs> that power is psychology. If I have to sell something in my profile, it's, it, I cannot write psychology, but at least if I have equipped with this thing, at least the person who is interviewing me, I can doing a brainwash little bit that person. Because I'm a psychologist. <laughs> I understand the people from where they are coming, right? If I build that expertise, what psychologist does? They will sit beside you and, okay, tell me more. Okay, tell me more. Tell me what? Actually, they are trying to extract all dump from your mind and then analyzing it. Okay, what problem are you facing? <coughs> of course, psychology, <coughs> psychologists do not solve only people's problem, but it, they are just sometimes forward thinking also. Uh, there are branches of psychology, which means uh, social psychology, clinical psychology, blah, 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 but you can start reading from anywhere, wherever you feel good. Like, there are a lot of subjects are there, uh, but the, wherever you start from is all, it's about like, how do I understand better about the people, their mindset, because I'm going to sell it, right? Because this empathy mapping in design thinking in a lean startup, it's all about like how do I live a life with my end user? How do you live a life with the end user with a high attitude? Hmm? I'll not go there. I'll not talk to that person. How do you extract those information if you have a high attitude? I'm just saying. So in lean startup, all those, whatever they are popularizing is all about like discover your customer. There is a para, right? Discover your customer. But if you have not reprogrammed yourself, how can you discover your customer? So this is all about like when you do the exco coaching, you are actually opening the gates of their mind. Opening the gates of their mind. What problem they are facing? How can I help? How can I help? If from their background, if you come as a as coach with the executives, like whomever you are coaching, your overall mindset should be like, how can I help that person? Whatever problem they are facing, it could be like a time pressure, productivity issues or quality improvement. How can I help my, those exco better way? So for that, first he has to open it up. Most of the time he will be like this. I am a 20 years experience, you are a 10 years guy, you will, you will coach me. I am saying that exco attitude, exco attitude, how can you change that? First of all, you have to open that gate so that they can start sharing their problems. Then only you can at least help them, right? So how do you build that relationship? How do you build that platform where they open up? They will not open up just like this. They will not be vulnerable in front of an agile coach if they are 10, 15 years experience. Because their mindset is like, okay, this guy does not have maturity to coach me. So at least you start building this credibility by demonstrating some good, good human personality. Then they slowly start opening up their vulnerability and you start coaching them. How to train a dragon? For me, whomever I have worked with the product owner, they are the very toughest product owner. Especially in Europe, especially if you work with European culture, they are very tough. They, do, they, they have very racist, yeah, they have very racist uh, mindset. If you have fortunately worked with those people. In ABB, I worked with the Germans, then uh, I have worked with the Finns, I have worked with the uh, Swiss people. Very tough to deal with these people. Until unless you start reprogramming yourself. Reprogramming means how can I help, how can I connect. They will not open. Those cultures, they are not open cultures. They are very close culture. So until unless you go into that bottommost of the desire, you cannot help. At least it didn't work. Maybe in the next seminar I come and then someone presents something different which I learned differently. But this is all about my experience I am sharing which has worked for me. May not be to work for you. So I will show you something why it will not work for you. Because um, uh, this statement tells about people is a bundle of belief. Like 20, 30 years if they worked on a say, waterfall away, if they think that this is the only way it will work, it is very hard to change. If their belief, it is working, it will work. It is their belief. So it is hard to change their belief. So you imagine with whom you are interacting as a agile coach. Like if you are working with a director with 30 years experience and so far it has been working for his develop some of the best product, what techniques you will use to influence that guy? It is tough. And as you and you want to continue as an agile coach, fortunately, you need to develop this skill. If you are changing your track, fine. 
if you want to go as architect it, you need a different skill set but if you want to continue in the agile coach line hopefully in another four five years it will still continue um, you need to develop this skill if you are planning to like Ram Charan want to be an executive coach where you will be co coaching the CEOs you imagine yourself scaling up at that level whom, whom you are coaching those US guys or, or European guys you need to elevate yourself at that level to influence them with the current thing you cannot influence those guys hopefully it didn't work for me maybe it will work for you I will not touch this you know we need it right do you know uh, Agree? Okay, good. So, uh, we, we are not talking about clinical psychologists, right? You don't uh, start uh, um, uh, treating a mental patient. It's not that about. It. It's all about understanding it, this subject, which can help me to equip myself better for the future. Uh, this is some of the famous change management project, change management framework. If you go deeper into this change management framework, it all talks about how do I get the buy-in from the people, how do I influence the people for the change. So when you implement this type of framework, it's very famous framework. You roll out agile, you roll out digital, you roll out any lean initiative, you have to come across this framework which can help you to become like a better way to implement it. But at the end, ground level, it's how do you inspire the people to something which organization is getting into it. Right, so people is the, this is agile manifesto. It's not readable, but you will be able to read it in the paper. It's all about people. Whatever the bullet marks are there in agile manifesto, it's all about people. So if my manifesto is 60% is about the people, what skill set I need to significantly develop? Huh? So I'm able to sell this concept? You have to read, you have to read something about people, belief, and all these things. If you have not got this pain, if you have not affected, you will not understand what I am saying. I have got, got this problem, so that's why I am talking about this subject. When you deal with those, especially the tough customer, Europeans and US people, then you need to start altering some of your thought process, the way you are working. So until unless you feel the pain, you will not change it. So whatever I am saying, you may not uh, like it or aligning with it, but maybe down the line, when you get to come across this type of challenges, you will slowly change it. Uh, empathy uh, is uh, like uh, nowadays all product development talks about empathy to implement empathy you need to alter some of your way of thinking way of liking and you need to cause the same thing to the team members because if you don't discover your customer you cannot build a better product so to discover a customer you need to understand who are your customer who are they are culturally originating what problems they are facing what are all those these are all soft aspect of the people and discovering people are you with me I'm going fast because he's giving a signal okay he is the father of psychology. He is the father of 1890. And every training I tell about this. If whatever you are seeing, it is just 10% of Chandan. You don't know about Chandan. Maybe 5 to 10% about Chandan. The dress, the language, the look and feel. But the bottom, the bottom 10, which is invisible, which few, few, few people know. Amit knows because he worked with me for one year. So he knows little bit. My, knows, uh, my wife knows much more. Because that's how we discover each other, right? Because the more and more time you spend with your team members, you understand what, what they want, what is their belief, where they want to go. <laughs> okay, some secret rebels. <laughs> so, it, it, so, the purpose of this thing is we, we don't know much about the people. It, you see only the surface, you spend time, you discover this iceberg and it, the more and more it is visible, it's better for you to connect with the team members. The first one, psychoanalysis part. But it, it, he has written one book, huh? a Interpretation of Dream. This much thick book, huh? you will not be able to read it in a one month also, 600 page. But anyway, I just give you one percent of his theory. So, these are some of the psychological theory, like it talk, talks about it. You will not change, as I say, you will not change until unless you experience it, okay. Uh, it is very difficult to change people who have strong conviction. It's very difficult. So you, you, you imagine yourself how you have to gear up for those type of people. It is there. All Once you go up in the organization ladder, you come across those type of personality. Very tough to change and they are tough because they are doing some good good work at the top exco level. But fortunately, yeah, fortunately if you are come across those type of people whom you have to coach, you imagine what level of maturity you need to increase in your profile. Uh, for sure, any agile methodology, blah, 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 this thing will not sell at that level because they are super smart. 
So to, to, to ch change something, you need to play with it, to experiment with those things. So whatever I am saying, you please go back and read and experiment with your team. It's, it's just to start with a small team. Huh? You don't try to experiment with a large team where you will be completely cornered there. So you start with a small team, see how it works, and then ex expand it. And we are part two, two component, right? One is your environment, how you are built, your environment actually significantly change individuals. And something I can change as a coach, which is called nurturing. As a coach with the team member, I can constantly nurture those people and change them. There are three different subjects, coaching, counseling, and mentoring. They are completely different. When you coach, you coach for a future. When you counsel, you fix some of their old problem. When you mentor, you just prepare themselves for the better, better result. They are all different. Huh? All the, just to tell you, okay, these are all different terminology. Coaching, counseling, and mentoring. They're all different. Uh, everybody knows about it, right? If I, if I address the people's basic needs, then I go to the self-actualization state, which Pratham people are already there. These Pratham people are already in the self-actualization state, which is called about how do I drive my passion. They are all driven by my passion. So that's why I say they are the few abnormal people, and they are very few in count, right? They are not in abundance. So how do I get this type of people abundance? By constantly positive reinforcing those people. Whomever you are working with as a team, identify what inspire them. Can I inspire them on a daily basis? It's a tough thing. But if you are successful, you people will tell, okay, he's the coach I want. He's the person I want. Or I would like to be with them. Because you give some positive aspect in their life, they, so, so they like you. Is it theory? Theory? Are you with me? Is giving a pause to digest. Huh? The rate of data goes. Evaporation rate is also same. So, <laughs> so I am giving a pause. Just a question. Does everyone need to be at that self-actualization state? Yeah. The interest, inter, I, did I? Yeah, because uh, I may not be motivated to go to that self-actualization state. I might be very happy at an extreme state. So the, uh, the intrinsic motivation, the Daniel Pink drive, it talks about like if I have to uh, self-driven car. If I have to produce a self-driven car or self-driven individual, I have to go to self acceleration state because with the momentary reward or with the momentary some of these things, it is not sustainable. The moment you push, it goes there, it stands there. And I push, it goes there. So how can I create an ecosystem in the organization where I produce masses of this type of people like a Pratham? You imagine how many rockets I can put or how many, uh, what is this? A satellite I can produce. So I have to push people to this state for sure. And for this, I need to really coach them such a way for that, you need to understand what inspires them. Everybody's inspiration is different. Someone is significantly money, someone is uh, learning, exposure, blah, 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 all these things. So it is required. Because at, at the end of certain age, you also would get, like to get the social recognition or, or all those acceptance from the people you need it. Otherwise, your life will become boring. So I, I, everybody needs. So whatever Maslow say, it's true. Ha, ah, this is a big subject. So most of the society general team members, like Amit will be knowing, like when you have been asked to design a leadership module, we have significantly read about this transaction analysis. It's a big vast ocean. Eric Byrne, who is the person who has developed it, all the coaches in society general are actually certified with this transaction analysis. It all talks about how do you motivate people? How do you inspire the people? By applying Eric Byrne's theory. It's an ocean. So we have just read maybe two, three percent of this, and we pra we apply it in our training, part of part of this, so that we can able to connect with the people in better way. Everybody knows about it, right? Most of the marketing sales, uh, that guy, uh, Eric and the Giant Within. What is that guy name? Um, he has written two books, no, Unlimited and Eric and the Giant Within. He has app. Huh? Tony Robbins, exactly. So he has applied it uh, in the 80s, like uh, how can I positively transform myself so that I can help my customer better. So that especially in the marketing or especially communicating with the people better way, uh, NLP really helps. Neuro-linguistic programming, where I start changing myself something and then people see the change, effect. It, it helps. You, you, there are a lot of books on this, on NLP. Anybody aware about this? It's, it's, it's easily, in the street you will get a lot of books. It's so abundance. So uh, I just example of two books. Ha, ah, exactly. So please attend that and transform yourself. And uh, to next year we met, you are a different person. Uh, you are no more look alike. It's different. Yeah. Huh? 
So, so this and um, so actually, see, uh, all those things has to be applied for the betterment of the people. So no bad intention. Like so, you transform the other or help the other people or connect with the people for helping them. See so if you. Maybe I don't know. I have not never come across this situation. But whatever I have applied NLP is, is for 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 my change and my team members change. So quickly, I'll finish five minutes. So there are several branches in especially in AI. All these things are coming up like ha, to read about the people and how they perform better. Cognitive psychology helps. Similarly, social psychology like how my team composition helps. Like one of my team in in ABB, most of them are from Andhra. And, and and over a period of time, I started recruiting more Andhra people because if I bring one more element, say one Bengali people I put there, they will start breaking the whole team. But the, when Andhra people are sitting together, I used to call them TDP, Telugu Desham Party. It was working fine for me as a manager. Like I was able to get the work done from them without much investment because they are nicely connected, bonded, and able to deliver the result. I'm just giving example of social psychology because if the things working in a certain custom, certain race, certain, it's good. Let us create that culture. So, the everything influence, like your culture, your background influence. Okay, uh, now this is uh, Martin Seligman has developed it recently. Like uh, it's not only talking about the narrative as aspect of the people. It's how can I reinforce the best part of the people, the strength? Let us talk about the strength and inspire the people through their strength and abilities. But I just told one line. He has written one book on that positive psychology. So I'm just giving you a glimpse like arena through which you can discover and start preparing yourself to help the team in a better way. Are you with me? With me. Um, there is something called industrial psychology also. Now to conclude, to conclude, all of us, whatever we have discovered, it's all about my experience, not your experience. I just shared some of the stumble or a bottleneck for me, like which uh, uh, just stopped me like as a coach, how can I help my client better. So I started reading about this for last five years. I'm reading about this. Most of my LinkedIn blogs, if you see 50% of all about is psychology, how I am connecting with the team better. How can I make my team happy that uh, you know that happiness hormone, right? Happen happiness hormone, you know, right? How can I do certain activities which can allow those happiness, happiness hormone to come up? Are you with me? I forgot that I only know the adrenaline is the bad part. The, there is something when you laugh. Huh? Huh, th th there are three hormones. Three, ho ha three hormones. But, but, uh, but my, my part is like how can I create or, or inject all those best things in the team where team feels motivated, able to produce more and get more better result. Then it, they will connect with your ex -co. Oh, OK, these people are genuinely producing. Unfortunately. In Indian IT industry, attrition rate is so high, so high. My best team members goes to my computer, Visa, MasterCards. So I continue to do the same thing, and I always in a payroll as an agile coach. Because always there is something to be done in the payroll. So all of us are at least uh, got some glimpse, huh? some glimpse about like okay, how it can help the agile transformation to be a sustainable. Huh? I didn't give any solution. I just share my stories like how it helped me to become a better coach so that I can ask more salary, right? Question, question, right? You can connect me in my LinkedIn. I am very always in a two sec. Every two second, I am in LinkedIn. So. Uh, you can I, you can ask me uh, in in the LinkedIn. Uh, hi Chandan, thanks for the nice uh, session and oversight that you gave on this topic. Okay, and a lot of books have been written right now on EQ and a lot of yes. stuff is going on. Okay, so I think it's coming at the right time. Uh, based on your experience, wanted to ask you as in you made a couple of statements wherein European customers, Finns, Dutch, Netherlands, Nordics, and all kind of geographies within Europe, those are tough nuts to crack. Okay, similarly, you work with US customers. So based on your insights and experience, do you have uh, a kind of approach that or, or probably a generalization which has worked well with European customers or US customers? Because from my experience, I can say European customers are more collaborative. US guys are more top down. 
okay mm -hmm. so the way we deal uh, with them approach certain large deals there is a difference okay how we work with the stakeholders so so my question is again okay mm -hmm. Agile transformation, organization-wide initiatives, as in what is the modus operandi or certain things which have worked or not worked between these two geos? So as you know, um, different strokes for different folks, right? If you have a similar type of um, fever, uh, doctor will first diagnosis and then give a different medicine. So whenever I work with any individual, first I try to connect with them, build a relationship, build a bonding and try to discover how can I help them because that's how I try to get the inspiration or how can I motivate them. Then we come to agile agile is secondary first is actually first building relationship first building friendship so that he can open up and then we start exchanging some of the things which i can help through agile but first is this you either european or a, a sudan or a south africa or bangladesh technically same we are all human at the end of the day how can i connect with my human friend and help that person so it takes time it takes a lot of time that building that relationship agreed because at times it's more of a prejudice okay because, for example, okay, somebody coming from a Southeast Asian country, uh -huh. okay, and okay, how can you coach me? It's all different. Even in the friends itself, the friends, all friends are different. They come from a village, and when I in Paris last last month, the same uh, village, village Paris guy and the city Paris guy is completely different. It's completely different. Uh, I have a question about the uh, Question about uh, people with the close mind. Also, uh, they are like uh, have a ego issue, yeah. and uh, they are not willing to change. And what they feel, what they are doing is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you know, uh, introvert persons. Yeah. They are not opening up with anyone in the company. Mm -hmm. They are just living in their way and uh, do their stuff and go yeah. on. Yeah. So not mixing with the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. So, how to handle them yeah. and connect Yeah, chai pe chai pe. First to the chai chai chai. And yes. ask some questions because everybody would like to express their... They would like to tell, they would like to tell stories, they would like to share so many things. So spend time with them and try to understand why that individual is close. Of course, you can always reprogram them through NLP. You can reprogram them, but it will take, it will take time. It will take time. So ask the questions and with that mindset, okay, how can I help them and why they should not be a close for a long time because of the circumstances changing, they have to open up, share and collaborate because Agile is all about collaboration. You cannot be an individual hero and survive in the world. So this positive counseling, positive things, you need to spend time and understand. So no, I didn't give any solution. Means That means you help that individual to open up. You can uh, try as uh, Sunil mentioned, vulnerability versus dominance. So if you show you are vulnerable that even the introvert person, I have experienced that they come out. You say, hey, we call this as master of interest, not learning design. How will we do this? And you show you are vulnerable. That person is going to come out vulnerable yeah. and pretty much. In that safety, in that, that comfort yeah, environment yeah. where he can open up. Yeah, I have a question. Didn't you injust this to other uh, other states while uh, appointing only Andhras. Yes. CPI University. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, yeah. So, I do injustice yeah. to other states. I, I had a team member who worked three years to build that power automation product and it worked for me. The, the close 20 team member, three years, it worked for me. So maybe other people didn't get opportunity, it was fine. For my MVP, I built a product which is world class. Because the collaboration they were maintaining, the problem they were solving, for me it was wow for that moment. If I would have been dismantled the whole thing and built a new team, I had to invest a lot of time on collaborating these people, bringing those chemical chemistry together. It takes time, right? The chemistry is 2 and so 4 if you put different things will come, right? So, it, it is different. Guys, we'll take this as a last question. Uh, I had a query. Uh, I think uh, you explained like to understand the customer based on uh, the, the originality of where the, from where the customer origins, like uh, Dutch uh, from UK or from or from any any continent. So understanding the customer, I think it holds the key because uh, uh, your half the problem is getting solved there itself, and you know what the customer expects. Okay? Yeah. Now when I see that is a, a input as such, like what is yet to be delivered to the customer. Now, uh, me as a process lead or a project manager, I have my deliverables which has to be delivered by my project associates. Mm -hmm. Now, you rightly mentioned that uh, you have a team of resources who are delivering it, like uh, bridging the gaps in between. 
will be done by the project manager or the lead itself. Now you gave examples of uh, countries, you gave examples of states. Okay. Now we are bridging India <laughs> on everything. Okay. Yeah. To uh, across the globe. Okay. Now that's a clear picture like wherein our uh, expertise comes into picture. Like right? we are intermediate and we are doing coaching, we are doing mentoring, as you said in your words, uh, rightly. And then you said NLP if chai pe charcha ho jai. Then all those things. Mm. Uh, what I mean to say is like if we have a pyramid in any project, we have a pyramid of senior to junior resources, and uh, at the end we have the end customer. Now the thing is the highlighted part from the pyramid to the end customer. How should it go about? Like uh, what I mean to say is you are getting inputs from the customer, you are getting the uh, delivery to be done from to the customer. You have a team, you have. A, a mix and match team of various states and uh, various competencies mm -hmm. and you have globally the same. Now you mentioned like it's like a UK region, US region, uh, South Africa region and so on. If there is a mix of global regions mm -hmm. and if you have a mix of global states, how do you handle that? So you need to include only Chandan, there is no other way. Because I cannot answer <laughs> uh, You cannot answer in short time, like, that's why. It's long <laughs> Okay. Okay. Maybe uh, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So, which means that how are you transparent with them, right? Are you, are you open about it? Are you not hiding anything? Are you keeping your word, right? And are you willing to help? Are you willing to solve their problem? Uh, I think you know if you if you are if you are consistent about those things and you reach out to them to very basic human values and yourself following those values. Yes, of course, you know cultural differences are important. You need to get that. But I think when you start off with something, you have to start off with your basic human values of transparency, willing to help. Empathy and actually demonstrating that that you can do something, uh, you know, to solve it. Take a small problem, solve it for them, and that's how you were able to win trust. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.